So this is what it takes to integrate any project you like. You only will have to have a default co constructor. So default constructor is required. This is the only restriction I know, default constructor. Okay? So then this guy was a kind of happy after this action. So it was okay, it worked somehow, but okay. It was not very happy, but. Uh, EGPs are hard to configure. So you have EGP, what does Minta configure? First to, um, to configure with XML. Well, many people think that I'm, I'm, um, I have to use the annotations for everything. And this is not true. How it works is you can use first, you can rely on the conventions. Convention does mean predefined defaults. If you have the conventions, you can override the conventions with annotations, Java annotations. And then you can deploy your application. If you are not happy with the annotation, you can override the annotation with XML. This is how it works. So you can override everything you want afterwards with XML. And what I do, I do the following. I override the configuration with XML for test. And in production, I delete the XML and I have the production mode, for instance. So I don't deploy in production with XML because why XML? You know? Uh, it was uh, buzzwords uh, some years ago, but now XML is just, everyone apologizes about XML, really. So if, you had, if someone builds a frame, it's okay, almost without XML, yeah? Um, no? Okay. Except you are a content management system or something like this, of course. Um, so what I can do, I don't use it a lot, but it's possible. You can inject, for instance, primitive data types here. And you can configure this in XML. And actually, what I hate, but it will change in EGP3.1, is this one. The uh, injection target is actually not needed because we have the name. And this will be optional, so this will be removed. This is right now in EGP3.0. It's possible to doing so. I don't use it because it's too verbose, the XML, but it's possible. I would use, for instance, Juice. And Juice is able to load properties and inject straight to the beans that are done. Um, but I, I try to avoid such a configuration uh, in real work projects, I use uh, database, for instance, to, to, to store the, the configuration and fetch everything from database. So much more convenient than playing around with XML and hoping that it will parse. Yeah, so. Questions? Yeah, it's not beautiful, but portable. And uh, it will be improved in EGB 3.1. And if you use Juice or Spring or something like this, you can inject whenever you want. By the way, uh, Spring guys are using, uh, are, they have already EGB 3.0 container, it's called Pitchfork. You can download from Spring source, they have a working EGB 3 container, so you can deploy EGBs as they are into Spring, which is very interesting. And Matisse, Project Matisse with E, they will, uh, they will build EGB 3.1 support in Spring, which is actually a great story because then you can deploy EGBs into Spring and uh, on all application server you want to. EGBs are hard to migrate. So um, last time, uh, last year, I got lots of project of migration projects and people, why? Because, yeah, probably because of crisis and they don't, don't want to pay the licenses. And that's for instance, uh, BA was bought by Oracle and there is some licensing changes and so on. And, and then we had to migrate. And actually my job was to migrate from J2E1 for BA to J2E1 for something else. And from J2E1.4 to, one, to uh, 2.1.4 is not a, it's not fun to doing so because of XML. And there is another pass, which is very, very interesting, and I would like to, to show you uh, how it works. So this guy is an origin EGB2. Uh, I have to look at this, it's too big. So uh, how it works, this is legacy for B. This is a proof of concept, what I did for my clients to show how it works. So there's a kind of service locator I just expanded the service locator to show you. You know service locator? Service locator get home and so forth. It creates the local home and creates the bean. And I have one method, get message, this look up legacy service bean, get current time. Okay, it's just a proof of concept. We, we migrated the projects after this. We built some templates, we showed the developers. And this is a beautiful piece of XML. Yeah? And uh, the intention was, the intention was to have everything replaceable. So at the sunset uh, and the beginning of EGB2, oh, yeah, okay, we can replace, uh, I don't know, facade bean with something else. And believe me, I never replaced it in my past one, other project, never. And I always generate this guy with Xdoclet. 
always. Never wrote it by hand. So uh, there are some guys that say, okay, there's no problem with VI, but yeah, I'm not one of those guys. And then what I did, what you should know, EGB3 is backward <coughs> compatible. So you can deploy EGB to all beans as EGB3. And this is the key to migrate. So what I do here is the first time I removed XML entirely. And I use annotations instead of XML. So this is actually almost the same bean. And I said, okay, this is important. This is a local host. So I expose, you know, the same, the same bytecode as an EGB3 without having XML. This was the first step. Then I was able to inject my local home so I could remove my service locator. And this was important in my projects. The, um, the business logic had to remain the same. So we, want, we didn't like to touch the business logic because you know legacy is legacy and uh, yeah, it was just, it should be mission possible, not mission impossible, yeah? But uh, now you are done. What happened there, this is actually the effort to migrate EGB2 project to EGB3. You can delete the XML entirely and then you can decide whether you would like to delete, for instance, uh, the home interface, to introduce here business interfaces optional. But now you are migrated. Having that, you are not only able to migrate to, uh, to, to, uh, to another application server, you are application server independent. There is no XML. You are EGB3 application, okay? And this is, I'm doing a lot of this. I guess because of crisis, EGB3 is the only one technology which is vendor neutral. And big companies are a little bit afraid about uh, you know, licensing issues and stuff like that. And if you have EGB3, you can deploy to every application server you want to because of strategic reasons. So in my eyes, I, I thought because of crisis, I get some vacations this year. And I had almost canceled the Marston because I get so many requests to, for EGB because of vendor neutrality, I guess, because of strategic, strategic reasons. Um, so EGB3 are compatible with EGB2. This is actually great. You can deploy EGB, EGB2 beans as EGB3 and refactor later. Write test, refactor, incrementally remove your code. If you are done, 80% of your code is deleted and you are potted. Okay? Understood this idea? This is very important. With the add local home and remove XML, this is actually great. So you should not migra migrate from JT14 to JT14. It's a huge deal because you have to fiddle around with XML. But if you remove the XML, it is easier to migrate or port from EGB2 to EGB3. Uh, okay. Yeah, and the last point is how to develop. I actually wanted to hack something. I don't know whether we have time, but we have time? Seven minutes, but okay. So, EGB3.1, the simplest possible EGB is this. You only need this guy, stateless. The simplest possible EGB would be uh, a class without stateless, but then I would, uh, 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 would need an XML deployment as crypto. And I don't like XML, so this is, from my perspective, the simplest possible. Um, yeah, you are done. This is what you need. So what you need to compile, you need only the stateless annotation in your class path. Then you can, with Java C, compile the stuff. And how to deploy? You only need a jar, a jar archive, and you can uh, put this in auto-deploy to Glassfish or JBoss and, and, and it is deployed. So there is nothing magic between. You do not need any wizards or XML de deployment script or something like this. So, and how to use it? So as if you have a server, you can just inject your simple sample and you are done. So from my perspective, there is nothing simpler than this. And actually, I challenge some people on DevOps, okay, if you have no juice, spring, or whatever you want, show me something which is simpler than EGB3. And people start to talk, EGBs are too simple, are simplistic. <laughs> can happen? Then we can introduce some patterns and we can in increase the complexity, but you know, per definition it is not. So, questions? <coughs>